to this um, screencast about dynamic drop downs with filtering support using handlebars. So in this screencast, I'll make the assumption that you are, you know, handlebars fairly well. That um, you know how to add templates with handlebars and how to actually display a list of data onto a web page using handlebars. So for this. Um, exercise will be using this example here that you can find in the codex github repository um, it's called tso tso stands for teacher subject organ subject organizer so what that basically is this example project that help you to, le to learn how to dynamically add drop downs on js in a javascript single page app which is basically what you've been doing using handlebars um, the application allows school to add which teacher is teaching which subject to which grade okay so you can click on this link here and then you can actually access the application online so what we have is you have you have a screen like this currently there's one teacher that's called andre that's teaching history to grade seven so what i can currently do is i can add another teacher say bob crow okay and he's teaching maths to grade 10 okay so if I add that you'll see that Bob Crow is now added here and um, you'll see we added here as a teacher um, and you also see then that his maths has been added here and that he's teaching to grade 10 so I can actually say now that he's teaching for grade 11 as well so looking at this now you can see that Bob Crow is actually teaching grade 10 and 11 so you'll see now so the problem starts here now is Bob Crow is in here twice in our filter drop down. Um, maths is also going to be in here twice. Um, grades kind is not duplicated. But if I say that Bob Crow is also teaching for grade 7, you will see that the grades drop down value for grade 7 will be duplicated. So the thing that we'll be learning in this screencast initially is to say how do I get rid of these duplicates in these drop downs? So what you can do. Um, you can look at the code for um, this exercise in GitHub. So you can actually see how this whole thing works so far. You can study that, so the way it works, so the code is in here organizer.js, and you will see here, that is a code that we just ran. So, um, and you can then see also in index.html that we have currently two handlebars template the first one is for the teacher template in the table at the bottom where it displays the data for all the teachers and then you also have the filter section where you have the drop downs which is this template over here so the part that we're going to be filtering we're going to be focusing on now is actually working on how to have a great unique list of entries in our drop downs Okay, for us to do that, we the important thing you need to know is to you actually need, need to know in JavaScript how to create a unique list of data, create a list that doesn't have duplicates. Okay, so what I basically have here, so I've just started the example here. So if you know how to take a list like this, it's basically a list that contains a collection of fruits, so it's basically a list of strings. If you know how to actually take this list and create a list that contains no duplicates, you will basically be able to fix the teacher's search subject organizer screen um, to remove duplicates from the drop down. So for this example here, so what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to run this using Node.js, which is basically just Java on the command JavaScript on the command line. So I'm going to run this script using Node. So what you can see here that I'm running it, Node Unique JS, and you see that there's currently 14 items in the list. But if you can see here, there's duplicates. Apple appears quite a few times in there. Even something like Pear appears here quite a few times. So what I need to do now is we some we need to create a unique list of fruits. So what I need to do is I need to find a way to create a unique list of fruit. So the algorithm we need to use, or i.e. the steps we need to follow to create a unique list 
is the following so the first thing you want to do is we want to loop over our fruits list loop over fruits okay so that that's the first thing you want to do in fact before we loop over fruits we we want to declare a new list an empty list that's going to contain all the unique list of fruits we've already done that over here so what i need to do is i need to loop over fruits and then while i'm looping over fruits i need to check if the current fruit is in my unique list of fruits okay so i need to check if it's in there and then i need to say if it's in there add it to my if it's if it not in there add it to my unique list of fruits so what will want to happen once my loop is done once my loop is is done okay i should should have a unique list of fruits okay so let's see how we do that so the first thing we need to do is we need to loop over our fruits so i'm going to do a for loop here and i'm going to say fruits okay so i'm looping over my fruits and here i'm going to say var fruit so that is my current fruit that i'm having so if i have this code and i say log fruit and i run this code i'm going to run it over here unique fruit you see i'm going to have a i'm printing out all the fruits that i found and you can see there's duplicates you can see that apple is happening a few times orange pear apple even kiwi is at least say twice so what i now need to do is i actually need to check if this fruit is existing in unique my unique fruit list so the first way i'll do that first is i actually need to loop through my unique fruit list and check if this fruit is already in this list so what i would need to do here is i need to actually have see if there's a match so initially i'm going to say something like match is false okay or let's let's be more specific let's say found fruit okay so we basically i'm going to say find fruit is false and then what i want to do is something here i want to say if found fruit so if find fruit is false so basically if not find fruit is true what i want to do is i want to say unique fruits in list dot push i want to push my fruit in there okay well, what's currently going to be happening is that find fruit is always empty so it always push it into this list okay so what i actually need to do is i need to first loop through my unique fruit list okay so i need to do something like this and then i would kind of have something here for unique fruit okay so i have something like this so now what i want to do is i want to check if um, i basically want to check now if fruit is equal to basically want to say if fruit is equal to unique fruit then i basically would done to say found fruit is equal to true so what that basically means is that it found this fruit in the list okay so what i can do at this size as soon as i find the fruit what i actually would like to do i would like to break out of this loop okay i could make it loop until the end but at this point i now find the fruit so it basically means that this fruit is in the list so i need don't need to keep on looping but at this stage what i basically want to do is i set find fruit to true um so it, if it gets here if find fruit is true it's not going to add it to the list it will only add find fruit to the list if it is 
not already in the list so basically meaning that find fruit is false so it loops through and it never met this condition over here there was never a condition where fruit was equal to unique fruit so if I run this now so what we had here in the past in the past unique fruit list was all, always zero so now let's see what happens if we run it now so if we run my code now and say run 14 okay there's something wrong here okay so let's see what's happening here okay so the problem is down here with this loop okay I've used I for the outer loop and for the inner loop so I need to change that and I need to use a different variable for the inner loop so what I need to do here for the inner loop I need to use Y and I need to check that Y is less than this I need to increment Y over here and then I need to actually have Y here so now in the inner loop I'm using a different variable so let's see what's happening if I run this now run my code so now that I can see actually I have 14 in my first list I've got six in my last list so let's have a quick look and see what we have in our list now so in unique list of fruits we have that and in here we have that so let's have a look let's run that again now um, so now I can see my initial list I've got apple pear orange okay so now in this I've got apple pear orange kiwi and lemon and grapes okay so so now I can actually create a unique list so the thing that I want to do now is I want to look at currently I'm looping and then I'm looping again so there's a lot of looping going on here so what I really would try and like to do is to actually see if I can cut down on the number of looping that I do so what I can do is I can I, we can use a map that would help us to as a reference point so I can actually create fruit map yeah, which is initially an empty map so what I can do instead of looping all the time I can actually check if I've already have seen a specific fruit so what so what I what I can do is um, I can use I can do the following so I can have an if statement here and I can basically check fruit map I can actually check if the current fruit is in there so I'm basically saying if the current fruit is undefined it basically means that I haven't seen the um, this fruit before so what I will do in this case is that now I would like to say fruit map dot fruit is equal to fruit so I'm actually adding entry into my fruit map and not only that I'm also now need to add an entry into into my um, list okay so my unique fruit list here so I'm doing this so I'm now pushing entry in there so I've got fruit in my list as well so what I can do now is I can now comment all of this code out all this looping that I've done before um, and let's see now if I run this code what is it doing so if I run this now running the code and as you can see I'm still now having it's the same as before basically so I'm having my big list here and I've got the list here at the bottom where I only have six entries so um, what I will do now is I'm going to delete this code here okay so what I will do now is I can clean this up a little bit but as you can see so now I can actually have some code here that can take a list with duplicates inside of it and what will what we can do now is I can loop through them get the current fruit and you see I can even find this in here here and then I have my fruit map here where I'm checking does the current fruit exist in there um, if it is in there if it's a ie this key is undefined then I will add an entry for that fruit into my map and then once done I'll push an entry into my list as well so what's going to have every time I come in here and I've already seen a fruit so there's already an entry inside of my fruit map I'm not going to add a new entry to my list so at the end I'm going to end up with a unique list of fruits so that's like a quick introduction to you how you can actually go about creating unique lists of data so the next step for us would be actually to see how we can use the same technique to create unique list of subjects, unique list 
of um, teachers and also grades in our exercise for our teacher subject organizer.